So let me tell you, my reservations are made, my plans are solid. I'm going to be in Florida on April 2nd and 3rd to celebrate the 500th anniversary of Juan Ponce de Leon's great discovery. But it's not really fair. I'm going to a celebration that should be coming to me and to all of us across this country. When Florida marks its quincentennial, the whole nation should be celebrating its 500th birthday. After all, on April 2nd and 3rd, 1513, Ponce de Leon didn't just land on discovered what today is known as the state of Florida, but the mainland that later became the United States. He discovered our country. Although Florida initially was believed to be an island, in the late 16th century, European scholars and map makers used the word Florida to describe much of the territory now known as the U.S. mainland. Yet nowadays, when we hear that Ponce de Leon discovered Florida, we give him credit only for the state. It's absurd. Well, why should we deprive ourselves from celebrating our 500th birthday? Why aren't we planning a huge national series of events to commemorate our quincentennial in April? Why are we letting Florida have all the fun? And why is the rest of the country oblivious to the upcoming Florida celebrations? Could it be simple confusion about the territory that Ponce de Leon really discovered? Could it be small-minded planning by Florida officials who failed to call for a national celebration? Or could it be greed for tourism dollars that made them reluctant to share their party with the rest of the nation? Or could it be the black legend, that insidious centuries-old campaign that keeps minimizing the accomplishments of the Spanish explorers and their Latino descendants? Had this country been discovered by Anglo-Saxon explorers instead of Spanish conquistadors, wouldn't we be getting ready for fireworks all over the United States? The answer is yes, all of the above. In 1976, we had a great national celebration to commemorate the bicentennial of our Declaration of Independence. Wouldn't it give Americans another wonderful opportunity to reconnect with yet another portion of our history, especially the history of Ponce de Leon and the millions of other Hispanics who have been following him to North America since 1513? I've written five columns on our upcoming birthday. You can see them all on hiddenhispanicheritage.com. But the key point of all my columns on our quincentennial is written on the wall in San Agustin, Florida. It clearly states that the name Florida was later embraced by all of what is now the United States. So why neglect our American Discovery Day? Is it because it recognizes the Hispanic roots that American history tends to keep hidden? Is it because it reminds us of the nearly a century of Spanish exploration of North America before the British arrived? Mind you, in 2004, the two senators from Florida, Bob Graham and Bill Nelson, both Democrats, introduced federal legislation that would have established a national commission on the quincentennial of the discovery of Florida by Ponce de Leon to encourage, coordinate, and conduct celebrations that would enhance public understanding of the impact of the discovery of Florida and the history of the United States. Although it was passed by the U.S. Senate, the bill never cleared the House of Representatives and never became law. And so plans for a national celebrations never went anywhere. Yet now that so many politicians acknowledge their need to reach out to Latinos, one would think that they would grab this opportunity to begin recognizing 500 years of hidden Hispanic heritage. This is the time to recognize the great feats of those conquistadors who discovered, explored, settled huge portions of North America long before other Europeans. Ponce de Leon arrived in the New World on Columbus' second voyage, became the governor of Puerto Rico, and then led 200 Spanish sailors who were the first Europeans to set foot on the mainland that later became the United States. This is the time when all Americans should be learning more about them. Nevertheless, this is only happening in Florida, where a year-long series of cultural and heritage events already are underway. Under the statewide Viva Florida 500 campaign, there will be history lectures, art exhibits, tall ship plotillas, parades, fireworks, and wonderful reenactments of historic moments. But unfortunately, these events are so small and so local that the rest of us are not even aware of them. If you follow the news accounts on plans for the Florida celebrations, you know that that instead of trying to involve the rest of the nation, two towns are currently competing for the right to claim the site where Ponce de Leon first landed. First, you have San Agustin, founded in 1565, remaining, remaining the oldest permanent settlement in the United States, but also always claiming to be the site of Ponce de Leon's first landing in 1513. On April 3rd, the city is planning a ceremonial replica ship enactment of the landing at the downtown Bayfront area a mass in the Cathedral Basilica of San Agustin, the erection of its fourth 
Ponce de Leon statue in the town, and the dedication of a reproduction of the baptismal font on which Ponce de Leon was baptized in 1474. I plan to be there. And then you have Melbourne Beach, some 142 miles to the south of San Agustin, where a community activist and his history buffs have been on a decade-long campaign to prove they live much closer to the real landing site. On April 2nd, Melbourne Beach will host its own replica ship landing reenactment, an Air Force flyover, a naval 21-gun salute, the unveiling of a 10-foot bronze statue of Ponce de Leon in the city's own new Don Juan Ponce de Leon landing park. I plan to be there too. For other columns that are part of my series in search for America's hidden Hispanic heritage, I've already reported from Ponce de Leon's old house in Santo Domingo and from his gravesite in Old San Juan. But for the reenactment of his disputed landfall, I'll be driving all over Florida, not only to report to other Americans on the birthday party they will be missing, but to showcase the Hispanic heritage that will be uprooted there and yet remains hidden from the rest of the nation.